Ashley here, and today I am going to show you how to move your spa bags into your auto tub. And I also will be doing a liner experiment. So one of my mono tubs will be without a liner, and one will be with a liner to see which one does better. All right, so my oyster mushrooms have fully colonized, and this is my Milo millet and whole grain experiment. Experiment, and this is the Milo. And from the three uh, different grain spawns, um, I think that the Milo did the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this for my liner monotub experiment. So the first thing that we need to do is to prepare our monotubs to colonize the bulk substrate. And in, in order to do that, we need to go ahead and cover all of, the, um, all of the holes with tape so that it will keep its own environment inside of the monotub. Thing, but go ahead and try that for first and then I made a straw and sawdust uh, bulk substrate for the oysters and let's go ahead and cover this one okay so we have covered our holes, and now we are ready to add our bulk substrate and our spawn bag into our monotub. So the first thing that we need to do is break up our spawn brand, our spawn bag. And I like to just sterilize everything because it's the best. it yesterday I let it sit for 24 hours so it's ready to go and it's not too cool it's nice and moist so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to layer our spawn bag into our mono tub all right this is very exciting so I'm gonna go ahead and open our spawn bag looks good smells good in there no funky smells. All right. And I'm going to use half and half. So I want to try to use about right here to this one. So we're going to just have a layer at the bottom and try to break it up as best as we can. Then I'll take a layer of bulk substrate. Trying to break up the spawn bag as much as you can. All 
really, really like the smell of this whole stuff. <laughs> the sawdust smells so good. And then lay it on more of our spawn. the bottom so I want to try to wring it out as best as I can but it's good to be damp we want it to be a little bit damp I probably will use the last of this and then do one more layer and spawn And then we want to mix that last layer up. except without a liner. So here we go. So I had this guy in there. I already sterilized this thing and wiped it down. Hey guys, Ashley here, and today I'm going to be opening up my oyster mushrooms. It's been 14 days and they are both fully colonized, both the liner versus the no liner. And today we're gonna to open them up, um, add the polyfill into the holes, um, um, add some moisture into the box to make sure that they uh, don't dry out and our fruiting bodies will start to come up. So the next stage, all we need to do is to open them up, remove the tape. So go ahead and do that with the first one. All right. So 
We have removed the tape. Now we want to go ahead and add some polyfill. Usually I like to get like a handful out like this and then squish it in. You don't need it to be too thick because we do want airflow to get into the tub. It's really important that we displace the CO2 from the mushrooms and that we get clean air into the mono tub. So I'm just going to go through and add polyfill to all of the holes. This one actually was preset. Okay. The next thing that we want to do after we add the polyfill is to spray the tub down. But I am not going to be adding a casing layer to the oyster mushrooms. According to the mushroom cultivator, it says that the oyster mushrooms, um, uh, a casing is not required. So because of this book, I am not going to add a casing. I also want to be able to see the pins from both tubs. So if I add the casing, it's not going to be as easy to see the experiment. So um, because of that, I'm going to go ahead and not add a casing as well. So when we spray down the, the mono tub, we want to make sure that we do not spray directly on the mycelium. It's pretty fragile at this point. The fruiting bodies are really strong and hardy and you could um, actually spray directly on them. But if you spray directly on the mycelium, then you'll see that the water kind of breaks through and damages the mycelium a little bit. So in order to keep high humidity, high humidity within the tub, we're going to spray the tub, but all we're going to do is spray down the sides of the tub like this. And that will keep a sufficient moisture level or humidity level within the tub. And then as much as you can, I would say at least twice a day, you want to try to, to um, spray down your tubs to keep the moisture in. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from having a solid lid to a clear lid. And then I'm going to place this tub like in front of like my window to the side. Um, just have to, for it to be able to get some of the sunlight, but not direct sunlight. If you have direct sunlight that goes directly into your monotub, you, directly into your monotub, then you can end up killing the mycelium that way. I've actually um, had a few spawn bags that I've killed that way. So we want the mushrooms to be near light because they want to grow towards the light, but we don't want them to be directly in the sunlight. Again, if they are sitting directly in the sunlight, you are going to kill your mycelium. And that's it, guys. So now, um, over the next like several days, we are going to see these mushrooms shoot up. They're going to be so fast, you're going to see uh, mushrooms in the next few days, um, as well as they're going to be ready to harvest in probably like a week. So it's really exciting. The liner um, seems, this is the one with the liner. And the liner seems like it's doing, it's colonizing a little bit slower, but maybe not slower, it's maybe colonizing like taller in a way. Um, so I'm really curious to see how the pinning will do between the two tubs. Um, but right now this one has a tons of pins all the way throughout um, just the main um, cake here, as well as they're all around the edges as well. I can see that, which we know with the liner that Hopefully our pinning will not be around the edges and we're going to get a nice full fruiting body within the center of the cake. So um, we will go ahead and do the same thing we did with this tub. And uh, so you guys can see it, let me take it out over here. So here is the liner. And we're just going to remove the tape. And this one seems like it has a little bit more moisture in it, but it's about the same, really. So, we're really going to see a difference with this liner experience experiment once, um, once it starts painting. Okay, so now after we add the polyfill, 
We want to go ahead and spray the mushrooms down. Again, since we're not using the casing layer, um, we shouldn't directly spray the mushrooms because it'll damage the mycelium. So in order to keep a high humidity within the tub, we just really need to spray the edges down and maybe you could spray the polyfill a little bit. Just so you kind of see the condensation on the outside of the tub. And then again, I want to change this one to a clear wood and we're ready to fruit. Um, so go ahead and put your tubs in somewhere that's between like 77 and 80 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Someone that has a little bit of light, um, just not direct light, and watch your mushrooms fruit. And then every day, guys, you want to open the tubs up and spray around the outside of the tub at least twice a day. Um, when I was fruiting my other mushrooms, I think I sprayed them like six times a day. If you let the mycelium dry out, then your mushrooms will dry out. Um, I'm going to be doing time lapses on both of these so I didn't make these automated tubs, but as long as you spray them down, they'll have enough humidity or enough moisture to keep fruiting. So, um, here we go. The next stage is fruiting. This is the exciting part. Thank you so much for watching. Hey guys, Ashley here, and today I just wanted to show you quickly how you should spray your mushrooms every day, at least two to three times a day, in order to try to keep the humidity up within the monotub. So I can open the monotub and it's, um, I started to fruit these about two days ago. So they're really starting to pin and come through. And I have a little humidity um, control over here at the side. And right now it says that it's 77% and uh, it's about 70 degrees in there. So we definitely want it to be a little bit higher humidity, which is fine. So we're gonna spray our mushrooms. And because I did not put a casing layer on these mushrooms, we want to make sure that we don't spray directly onto the mycelium because the mycelium is pretty fragile. And if um, and the droplets will kind of break through the mycelium and ruin them, and they'll just have to colonize more in order to fruit mushrooms. So instead of spraying directly on the mycelium or the cake, we're going to just spray the edge of the surrounding tub. And that will keep the humidity pretty high within the tub. Also, when you start to see these fruiting bodies, you can actually start to spray the fruiting bodies directly. And so I just like directly just give them a little squirt, a little squirt, not much. Um, because we don't want the water pooling on the mycelium. That's bad as well. Um, when the mushrooms start to get bigger, we can really start to spray them down and I'll show you how to do that later on. So that's pretty much it. You just wanna open them up, spray the outside of the tub at least two or three times a day, maybe just twice, one in the morning and one it before you uh, go to bed. And then that's it. It'll keep the humidity up and your mushrooms will fruit. Um, so thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, it's been a couple more days and the mycelium is starting to really colonize and get a lot hardier. So I wanted to show you that now we can actually start to actually spray the mycelium directly. Not a whole lot, um, but we wanna make sure that the mycelium stays nice and, and moist so that the mushrooms continually start to grow. So we'll go ahead and show and i have not sprayed my mushrooms it's like eight o'clock in the morning and i'm just looking at them and if you've noticed that the tub is pretty much completely dry around the edges so the first thing i'm going to do again is i'm going to just lightly spray the edge of the tub like this and then this is the tub that has the liner in it and if you notice that the fruiting bodies are starting to come up, and what we want to go to do is we want to spray the fruiting bodies directly, very lightly. And then I'm also going to kind of move the spray bottle a little bit further up so I'm not directly on there and lightly spray the mycelium. And if you kind of notice when the water does touch the mycelium, sometimes the mycelium is pretty fragile and it'll actually break right through. So we want to be really careful that we just lightly spread it around. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, just doing it along the edges is sufficient. And then the fruiting bodies like to have a little water themselves. Keep them nice and hearty. And we're gonna close it off, ready to go. 
Make sure that you guys are spraying your mushrooms down two to three times per day. I usually do it in the morning, um, and then I just lightly spray the outside of the bucket like it, or the tub like I just showed you. Then sometimes I'll do it in the afternoon, and then I try to do it right before I go to bed. Um, you want to keep them definitely really moist in there and the humidity very high, but you do not want to have pools or puddles of water on the mycelium. It is natural to see little um, water droplets on the mycelium and that's called exudate and that's actually formed from the mycelium. So it's definitely natural. So if you see that, don't worry. Um, just don't have huge puddles of water when you're spraying on the mycelium itself. So make sure you keep your mushrooms um, nice and moist and these guys are really close to being ready. We're probably maybe like two or three days and they'll be fully um, grown and ready to harvest. Thanks for watching. here and today I'm going to show you how to harvest your oyster mushrooms. So today we're going to harvest the oyster mushrooms and then I'm going to show you how to spray them down so hopefully you get a second flush. So here we go. All right so our oyster mushrooms have been harvesting for about a week now and they are definitely ready to go. When they start to curl kind of like this on the edge um, you know that they're ready to harvest. So to harvest, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some gloves, just in case, you don't have to, but I do. And then I have my harvest bowl here, which is just a strainer. And I'm gonna be giving my mushrooms to my mother so she can cook with them. Next, what I like to do is go ahead and sterilize the knife that I'm gonna be using. And I just uh, spray it down with alcohol and I already pre-sterilized it as well. And then I use these alcohol wipes to give it one last um, wipe down. You probably don't have to do this, but I do it because I just like to be sterile. So here we go. So we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different clusters. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove them all. I also do have some new pins starting here. You can kind of see them right here. I'm not sure if you can, yeah. You can see them, these little pins are new. There's also ones like right here and right there. And there's one starting right here. <coughs> so we want to make sure that we don't disturb those pins. So we want to try to not touch them and cut them, cut around them. So here we go. So I'm gonna start with this one, and you just kind of take it at the base and pull it, and then I like to cut it before it starts to break from the mycelium, or before the mycelium breaks. So that's our first little cluster. Looks pretty good. And we'll just set them in here. So here we go. Try to break them off. Oh, I got a little bit of the straw there. That's okay. And then I'll do this one. So again, just kind of taking it from the bottom and cut and make a little slice. Let's see if you can see me do this. This one. So kind of break it from the bottom, slice it off. And here's our new pins. Trying not to damage the mycelium as much as we can because we definitely want to try to get those second flushes, if not a third flush. So there's a whole little thing right here started. So let me see if I can cut around those pins, which I did. So if you see it right there, there's some pins. Get this guy. Oh, got a lot of the bulk substrate there. We're gonna cut that off before I put it in here. And then this is the no liner tub. 
And in the no liner tub, we did get some pins around the side, but it also filled in um, quite nicely in the middle. And what I noticed is that they grew shorter and fatter. So I'm not really sure if that has to do with the liner or what that is. from the mycelium base. Oh my gosh, we got so many mushrooms. to get a second flush with our mushrooms is spray them down. So we know at this point the mycelium is pretty hardy and to the touch it's pretty hard. So I have started to actually spray the mycelium down so that it doesn't dry out and I'm also spraying inside of the tubs too. So we're going to go ahead and give the, the tub another spray down all the way around and then I'm going to go ahead and spray the whole tub down. Not too much though, so we don't want the water pooling or puddling on the mycelium. Um, a nice thin layer so that they don't dry out is perfect. And then we'll cover it back up and then wait for a second flush. So this is my tub without a liner. And this is the tub with the liner. They have a nice earthy smell to them. So let's go ahead and um, harvest these and I set this tub up at the same time and this one looks super good too, kind of move the polyfill so you guys can kind of see here. So if you noticed, these mushrooms grew much taller and skinnier, they seem a little bit hardier, but they did not pin around the edges at all really. Um, they're all in the middle. So I'm really hoping that we're going to get um, another second flush with this one that's a little hardier, um, but we don't know. So let's go ahead and um, harvest these. So I'm start with this one, kind of pull it over, show you, and then I'm, there's a bunch of pins over here, so I'm going to try to cut around them so that we can leave those pins. And these ones are nice and skinny. started. I leave that one. He's kind of just starting. This one's really big. It's probably one of the biggest ones in the tub. Yeah, look at this. Looks awesome. we got a hefty amount. I mean, there are several pounds of mushrooms, of wet mushrooms here. My mother's really very excited. Um, so now for to try to get a second flush, again, we're gonna spray our tub. I like to spray the edges just to kind of keep the humidity in the tub up. And then since our mycelium is hardy, we're gonna go ahead and just give it a nice light spray all around and then cover her back up. All right guys, we finished. 
all the way through. We harvested our uh, oyster mushrooms. It's really exciting. There's so many here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. You can reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. Thanks a lot. Bye.